Good morning guys, it's Craig here from Gifts Electrical. Hope you are all well. Um, so today's job is um, basically we're fitting a, a Tesla wall uh, connector for a um, client. The board that we're working off of is a Steeple, um, which is a Denman's own brand, um, Luden control gear, MK type board. So we've got a spare way and we've got the breaker. It's an RCB, RCBO. Um, type A which is fantastic. I've uh, got to do a bit of tidying up of these cables as well and we go so we're gonna come off this board come down the wall um, similar location to the existing cables <clears throat> we might end up moving that or changing that or something and then uh, come out somewhere on the back wall because um, the Tesla the, the charge is going on that immediate back wall there so that's handy. We've got a couple of things to do inside the house as well. Uh, we've basically had the DNO out. We've measured all the, the circuits um, and when fully operational, everything's sitting at about the max demand on there. Uh, the max draw was 38, um, 30 amps. So, but the DNO have come out. They've actually then checked the fuse rating and confirmed it's a uh, 100 amp so that's fine so we're, we're good to basically go and stick this on a 32 amp supply without any risk of blowing the main fuse um but yeah i'm gonna take you inside and i'll show you what we've got to deal with inside because we've got to do a quick bit of uh, change round of the control gear in there so i'll pick you back up inside the house okay so what we've got is our main income at 100 amp meter and then it goes to this Henley block. So these are 16 mils. These need to be changed to 25s. Um, we've then got a type um, 100 amp, 100 milliamp time delay RCD, which is only protecting this circuit here, which basically goes to our sub board. Um, this meter is literally just the meter for the barn area. And then we've got two boards here, um, RCBO boards, but it's got a main switch and it's a TT installation. So we've basically just got to um, reconfigure it so that that um, time delay RCD actually covers the whole installation. So yeah, we're gonna look at sorting that out. It's a bit rough around the edges as well. We've got another double socket to fit in um, under there behind the, the gear clear Linksys unit. Um, so when we've done that, we can then look to um, we can then look to actually sorting out the um, putting in the Tesla the charger. So I'm just going to the clients sort out the kettle, and then I'll be coming in here to actually sort out the wiring in here first. And we're going to be using flexi um, tails, so just make things a little bit easier. But yeah, um, I'm going to wait for them to finish boiling the kettle, and then we'll crack on. So. We've not touched either of these boards. Um, we've literally just replaced the tails from the meter to the 100 amp, 100 milliamp RCD, because it is a TT system. So this was only protecting the barn effectively. So we've done that, put in a intermittent seal, obviously for a tails, and then literally, so from the meter to the isolator, and then obviously we've then gone back into our Henleys. Our Henleys then feed this sub meter, which is obviously just for the, the it's just barn check meter. And then obviously that feeds the, the barn itself. So I'm gonna start um, the other side now, go into the barn, strip down the steeple board, and then we'll be able to start, I mean, the steeple, that should be a relatively straightforward. This has taken, what time are we now? Uh, so this is actually taking about an hour and 15 minutes to sort out, which I suppose in the grand scheme of things isn't isn't too bad, maybe a little bit longer, um, hour and a half at most. So yeah, just uh, the only thing is I don't use, um, I don't have any cleats anymore because I use linear clips for everything. Um, for, but I do have small round bands, so um, at least it's secure and it's not going anywhere in there all nice and tight. Um, so yeah. Uh, not bad, I'm, I'm happy with the end result, so the main thing is it works, so uh, we've upgraded obviously to health, so that's fine, so yeah, I'm going to start tackling the barn now, and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. So we're currently at the position where we've got our mounting on the wall, um, client has picked the height he wants it, um, 
we've managed to get two fixings which means it's actually relatively straight as well because obviously it's cotswold stone it's they didn't want it obviously on the the oak but um we've got it on there um so we're going to give him the option he's got um a bracket as well for the cable but i have said it will go round but it gives him the option he can never have it because it's a tethered unit he can either have it obviously around this or he can have this separate um unit here so cable comes through uh we've done a loop in well we will do and then this is the current state of play on our board so obviously we're coming out down there and then basically going to go up holes are pre-drilled for the linear clips obviously we've got this unit here you know the junction box there so we can't really do anything with that it's in the way so we're going to come to the in between that and the boiler and then carry on going up <clears throat> so the holes are pre-drilled we've cut out the section of the pla um, plastic consumer unit that we need to get our cable in and then yeah that's where we're at the um obviously cables we've managed to pull where the cables were damaged <coughs> excuse me um where the cables were damaged we've been able to pull enough slack from the boiler because they, they had a massive massive drop off loop pulled it back through and just uh wiggled it and junction box in the ceiling so that's done thankfully so yeah um we've got a plastic incomer and then we've got bonding from the board to the clamp here um where it then continues to the um on the outside of the building is the is the actual gas incomer so they've just done a, a complete cable through um from the from the board back down to the pipe and then obviously to the uh to the gas board but they didn't need to obviously it's a plastic incomer so they didn't really need to um they didn't actually need to bond it at all but of course it was done you know this is all historic stuff so it's not um i've checked it it's the bonding's good which is the main thing um and like i said tt system in this place so uh we don't have to worry about any pme or having a you know a matty or anything like that in this case because everything's tt both both the main house and the barn are tt so yeah i'm gonna i'm waffling now so i'm just gonna crack on um and i'll show you the next step okay guys so this is the uh board end made off um uh, using um an swa m 20s gland um i really do like these storm glands i think they're absolutely brilliant of course with the piranha nut and um, so no banjo required um if you're an apprentice or even if you're not uh definitely recommend the old uh ck armor slice brilliant tool along with obviously uh the nipex ergo strippers um yeah makes life a lot lot easier so i'm going to make this off in the board and i'll see you in a bit okay guys so cables in all terminated off which is nice so cables are out there and then if we go round basically i've got them linked out so the first test i'm going to do is continuity insulation resistance and then we'll go from there uh linked out the line and neutral so i always do an uh, r1 rn and then i'll do an r1 r2 so. so i've got my kt65 dl out um and what we're going to do is just already although it says the uh the leads are null you can tell that by that little tick we are just going to do a quick just reset them anyway so yeah see it's saying they're not Oh, why uh, with this so with this one so we measure it we get greater than 999 uh, right that's now null off let's connect these up so now we can null it so we don't we know that we definitely have our leads are nulled so 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 we'll get you connected so we're going to do it doesn't matter which one you connect to um but obviously i tend to stick with brown on brown um even though you don't have to uh, just for the continuity sake of things right so i don't know how well you can see the screen there you go right so that's so 0 0.03 i mean it's it literally cable wise it's a three meter run so there isn't really anything to it uh 0 0.03 
and then we'll do the same for uh, line and CPC. So I just need to uh, go and do that. So again, we'll swap them over. <laughs> so we're going to go on to line and CPC. And of course, because the uh, cable is the same CSA on all three um, cores, effectively we should get exactly the same reading. So we're right there, yeah, 0 0.03. So kind of expected that anyway. Obviously it was always going to be a low reading. Um, oh, did it, one. Now I normally record this straight on my iPad, but um, I haven't got much mobile phone signal here, so I'm just doing it normal. So the next thing we're going to do is installation resistance. So on here, you just flick it over. We're going to be sit doing it at 500 volts. The key thing, obviously, is to remember to disconnect your jumpers. And obviously, we haven't got anything connected. So obviously, there's nothing here. Um, we're just testing this cabling here. So let's go back. So obviously, it's already set up on line and CPC, so what I'll do is I'll do the line and CPC first. Greater than 999, so it's an off-scale read. If I then swap that over to the CPC, greater than 999. So, uh, I mean, in all fairness, I could stick a thousand volts down it. Brilliant. So it's beeping at me to tell me that we're at a thousand volts. Now, obviously it's a brand new cable. I wouldn't expect anything else. So I'm happy to say, Insulation resistance is greater than 999. Fantastic. So the next step, um, I'm going to get this wired up. We'll then get the board live and we'll also do our loop test. Uh, we'll do our PFC at this point as well, because obviously this is the board that we're working on. Um, I will, for the records, go and record the actual main incomer. Um, just so we've, we can compare the two, or I can compare the two. But yeah, um, board on, or cover on, switch on, and then we'll, uh, well, no, I won't, I won't put the cover on, because I need to test it still, don't I? So literally connect it up, turn the power on, and do our uh, ZS, Z, well, ZE, ZS, and then we can put our charger on, and we can do our tests on there. Okay, guys, so my system is now energized, and what I'm gonna do is just ensure uh, that I've got what, well, just double check my ZE values. If I can get this out. So obviously none of the breakers are on, um, but we do have voltage and the line and neutral going in. Okay, so what I'll do, again, we'll get out the Q-Tech. Let's get the other bits out of the way. Right, okay. So my Q-Tech is a three lead tester. So when I want to do a ZE, um, I basically need to use all three prongs. Um, so I have green to CPC and then I've got my line and neutral. So what I'll do is a bit difficult with one hand, but let's swap the camera over. So, right. so they're in and what we get is a reading on the meter. I don't know how you can see that. So yeah, saying it's we've got 248 volts at 49 0.9 hertz. So I'm just going to do hit the test button. So we've got 126 ohms. So on a TT system, anything less than 200 is is good. Um, obviously, above 200 is considered unstable. But on a 30 milliamp RCD, you could theoretically theoretically have uh, 1667. So we've got 126.3. Uh, I'm just going to switch it over to the line and neutral and do the same test. Line and neutral got 0 0.26. So you always record the highest value. Uh, it's because it's got the anti trip, it's going to take a little longer because it's got the anti trip technology turned on. Uh, so let's just turn that off because we're actually just doing it directly. So 126.1 for our ZE. So the next thing will be to do our uh, connect it all back up and do our PFC and PSC. Um, and then we can actually go to the Tesla charger, plug in our um, Rolex uh, car charger tester and plug the QTEC into there. So 
I'll uh, get this all put back and quickly get you hooked up on the other one. Okay guys, so what we've got, the Tesla unit is in and, and powered up. We've got our Rolex EV charge check, which uh, I have to say for 450 quid, it's, it does feel cheap and nasty, but it serves a purpose, okay? So it has a type one socket on the front and it comes with the adapter lead that converts it from type one to type two. So of course, with it being type two, uh, the Tesla charger, we just use the adapter. And then you simply press the button. And then what you should get is basically the lights all light up. So the Tesla has changed from green to red by the looks of it. So, oh dear. so it's green. Let's just hit the re. Okay guys, this is this job done and dusted. Um, sadly, the Tesla unit appears to be faulty. Uh, plugged it into the EV ch tester and you just get a solid red light on the Tesla charger and according to the uh, manufacturer's instructions, that actually means there's a, a fault with the unit, um, a hardware fault. So it is actually on and it is powered. Um, so, and we know the circuit tests are good. It's just a shame that the the unit won't um, won't do anything. Um, we've tried to reset, nothing works. So, but that is that's us done and dusted for this job. So, please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, you can do that using the big red button down below. Uh, click the bell symbol if you want to get notifications every time I post a new video. But for now, I will catch you again soon. Bye.